Hey y'all, insight number two. Um, just uh, catching up there, so had to, had to take a call in between, so flow a little broken, but anyway, let's get back into it. Um, so we talked in the first insight about why the story of Noah was so valuable to us and what we can learn from it, so that's what we're really focusing on this week. Now some words that really came to me this week as I was reading, and usually I try and give it like a title or a theme, um, like last week was all sort of agency. This week came cleansing, rest, miracles, healing, hope, peace, and prayer. Now, those words really don't sound like they go with flooding of the earth and killing of thousands of people and all the animals. Like, that doesn't sound like right, and yet it had to happen for a number of reasons. Now, you talk scientifically, so the ark left America's and floated over to the Middle East where it landed. That's how the people got from the Garden of Eden area over to that area. Also, this is also when the continental drift started happening and the Earth sort of moved into the maps that we know now and the Earth would have changed once all the waters receded. So that's another reason. Um, that would have happened, of course, once all the animals got out of the ark and went to the different parts. It would have started happening and sort of drifting like that. So that needed to happen as well. Um, it also needed to happen because the Earth has a spirit, just like us, and it's kind of a baptism of sorts, was the flood. Now, the more important reason it needed to happen is because everybody was so darn wicked, except for Noah and his family, and we'll get to Ham in a minute, but anyway, he turned out a bit, meh. Um, so yeah, why the flood? Like, let's read. So, chapter 6 of Genesis, verses 5 to 7, let's go there, it says, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So all that anyone thought about, anything that they were thinking about doing or being or saying, was evil continually. There was no other thoughts. There was nothing for goodness, no kindness, nothing. It was all evil. Terrible. Um, and it repented the Lord that it, and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. If you look at the footnotes for that, there's some really good um, Joseph Smith translation. Um, it pained the Lord. Like, it, it hurt him. That's what it's talking about. And in 7, And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Um, meaning it grieved him, that it, that this had happened um you know you think of when you create like just imagine creating a beautiful birthday party for your child and somebody just comes in and smashes all over it and throws it over the wall or you know you get robbed and your beautiful home gets everything just thrown about and and not for like money or gain or anything just destroyed it's heartbreaking um so you know not that the earth was like a child's birthday party but that's a hard thing to, you know, when you see that just destruction like that after something you spent so much time trying to make beautiful, it hurts. So this is the fix. So the Lord looked down and saw that except Noah and Mrs. Noah, because we don't know her name, so we're just calling her Mrs. Noah, um, the only thing mankind was thinking was evil. Everyone else was just thinking evil. It grieved him that he gave so much, and this was the outcome. I mean, it was going to get worse, right? But at this time I mean we have so many good people on the earth right now yes there's a lot of wickedness yes there's a lot of tragedy and terrible things so many terrible things and this last week I've heard some awful awful things and we've really stopped watching the news because we just can't tolerate seeing that anymore it grieves us so much however there's also so much good people on the earth that are willing to help the generosity and the kindness and the compassion that is out there from most people is simply amazing and beautiful and in this time that only happened with Noah and his wife that's it so um yeah so it grieved the Lord that he gave so much and this was the outcome so he washed the earth clean a baptism a fresh start just like when we get baptized it's a fresh start it was not an act of anger, hatred, or vengeance. Although it can seem like that, it was not. It was rather a cleansing for future generations to have a chance. Because, 
Elder Nellie Maxwell um, in answer to this question. Uh, why, why is some people wonder about the justice of God in sending a flood to destroy man? Like, how is that just, right? That's what they're asking. Out in L.A. Maxwell, he explained that at the time of the Great Flood, corruption had reached an agency-destroying point that spirits could not in justice be sent here, so that it was so wicked that any spirit sent here would not have agency. Because of how wicked it was, there's no way they could make choices that would ever lead to having like actual agency. It would be forced on them. That's how bad it was. And that's why a flood had to be. So there's several reasons in there, but most importantly was the freedom and the love and the cleansing for mankind that, that had to happen. And you know the Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ loved the animals and the people of the earth. And they would not do it out of anger or hatred. A lot of religions do preach this, that God was angry with them. No, he wasn't angry with them. He was sad. When your child mucks up and gets like that, sometimes there's anger. But more often than not, it just hurts, right? It's sad. So, this wasn't out of anger or hatred or vengeance. This was a cleansing of the earth to prepare it for future generations so they actually had a chance. Um... And you see the cycle continue, but it never got as wicked as it did right there. It is going to again though, but there will still be good people, a group of good people on the earth. We will just have to be stronger and endure and fight against that wickedness. And that's why you need to be prepared. So, one of the things you can learn from Noah. What? Did I hear you right? Listen to the prophet and don't be one of those people that causes pain for Jesus. Do you want to cause pain to Jesus? I don't. Did I hear you say that? I hope I did. If you've got any other thoughts, leave it in the comments, all right? I'd love to hear from you. I always do love to hear from you guys. A lot of you don't comment. A lot of you like and just move on. And I'm like, that's really cool. But, you know, I'm asking questions here. So give me some answers. See what you think. I'd love to hear what you think. All right. I'll see you in the third one, you guys. We're going to go and look at how miracles happen. This is a really, really cool look at how miracles happen. See you there.